All right, hey everybody, it's Jessica, and I have a special guest with me today, and her name is Justice. She is a trans woman. She is fighting in a boxing league, and she is doing the right thing. She is fighting men, and it is, I'm honored to have her on my show today, and we're just going to talk about some of the current issues that are going on in, in the world right now, considering women's sports and the trans issue that we're all facing, which is a nightmare as we know um and that's why you guys watch my channel and i appreciate that so please like comment and subscribe without further ado let's meet justice how are you doing hi and justice is uh up in the pacific northwest so she is um well tell us about your the the boxing organizations that you're going to enter into um okay so i'm in washington state and so um um we're part of usa boxing um so i'm going to participate in just amateur boxing which is you know it's kind of a funny name because it's like a misnomer because you actually have to be very experienced to um start it you know um but it's what they call like the phase right before professional boxing right so it's um ranked um the wins losses count you know and um you know everything is sanctioned that's cool and just so that we can get an idea, I'm going to show everybody uh, a little bit of justice sparring here. Okay. And um, this was about seven years ago, I think it said. No, um, probably about seven months ago. Seven months ago. That's right. My bad. So this was uh, justice sparring. This is a biological man we're, we're in the ring with. And tell us about what, what um, complications are you running into with um, finding male opponents? Have you had that? Um, yes and no, you know, um, so I'm starting, um, amateur boxing probably in the fall. Um, I'm doing one more sort of like exhibition style fighting, um, in August here. So, um, in two months, if, you know, people are watching this in the future and, um, you know, it's, a, it's equivalent to like a sanctioned fight, but there's the win loss just doesn't matter right there's it doesn't oh it doesn't affect so drinking that won't go on your professional record exactly so it's okay. like it's, it's what they call an exhibition so it'll be a ring with a ref um you know three three minute rounds um um and i'll be against a male opponent and so it's kind of like one last kind of like status check right to see if i can start doing um actual amateurs this fall so if i blow this guy out of the water then um then yeah we're, we're gonna move on so that's the plan you know we're training for a knockout <laughs> well i know you're gonna do good that's awesome so and then back to what you said about the amateur boxing ranks yeah if people don't know boxing um i come from a kickboxing background as well um i didn't know that yeah we, we didn't talk too much about that before but i trained um for a while and yes um there is uh <laughs> there's oh, what is it like grassroots boxing you can do that's not sanctioned and then amateur level and then to reach pro level that's you know like in bodybuilding they have you have to get a pro card before you can compete professionally uh -huh. and you know to get that pro card that's, that's a lot of work i, I know a lot of prof professional fitness um people that work for years to get their pro card it never happens so for you to get into the amateur uh boxing scene is is awesome and um i'm super happy that um one you you're promoting trans in in the right way and um we'll get into the the sports debate and well there's no debate <laughs> there shouldn't be a debate right trans, trans women do not belong in the women's division right it's, uh, it's to, to be a little doubled advocate there is kind of a, de a debate um i would i mean there's no debate but there's i would say there's one um exception um and it's kind of an exception that I don't even know if like really affects our generation. It, it's not something that, and it, it's it's the like the really really young people, you know, that like transition, and then like what that looks like in sports, right? Like we don't really have like clinical examples of that um, right now. Um, maybe in the future, right? I feel like the next generation of people that that's like kind of been like a trending kind of thing. So I don't know like what their kids are going to look like, you know, respectfully, but um, maybe we'll have examples of like people who start puberty blockers and then like never actually go through puberty and then like get into sports.
but as of right now like what we have and like the 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 situations that we see in sports there's no like argument right um a lot of um a lot of these girls are just kind of like exploiting you know it's like exploiting <laughs> the fact that you're trans to like get away with it right um yeah and i i want to touch on that too i have said in previous videos of mine that um th to play i use that word too to play devil's advocate now i do agree that a child um if we can figure out their gender dysphoria uh, prior to puberty and we start that child now i am 100 percent against puberty blockers um you either start on cross-sex hormones or you don't like that's my opinion i'm very strong-willed about that because you never want to delay the body's uh, natural progression girl like I, didn't even, I didn't even fix my cat until she was three because i right. wanted of her hormones to like become a woman you know the, the, the body needs to, to be, develop you know like a, a baby for the rest of her life you know i wanted her to grow into like a woman and get her size and um i i feel like it's kind of like it's it's something that we technically you know maybe should never have an example of because someone who's lived that lifestyle of that like extreme extreme exception and i'm not going to touch on like how i feel personally about it but like it's an extreme 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 exception i think we can all agree on that the, the people who fit into that role are not also going to be MMA fighters. You know, they're not also going to be like collegiate wrestlers, you know, they're going to maybe yeah. be like playing violin and, you know, like that will not affect, <laughs> that will not affect female violin players, you know? And so yeah, and um, it's, you know, the, the sort of people that end up specifically, you know, I'm all I can speak on really is combat sports, but I will say as someone who does combat sports, um i feel like it's kind of like a trickle down kind of thing right because that's kind of like at the top of um like risk right when it comes to discussion and so like totally. someone does combat sports when i see someone who like skateboards and they're like oh it's dangerous for me to skateboard with the men i'm like oh, I'm like how <laughs> you know like i take punches from them you know and so and you know I, i'm sure it's like a case by case thing i don't know all sports like on all the physicality involved you know i don't want to speak I don't know if there's like a physical part of skateboarding that I don't understand, but um. yeah, there's there's a few um, biological women on um, Twitter or social media or whatnot that have um, gone public and saying that there there was a trans woman who competed in the X Games with the skateboarding and the BMX and and she won. Um, the trans woman did. I'm sorry. Against men or women. The the trans woman competed in the women's division. Okay. And and took all the gold medals from the X Games in skateboarding and BMX and Damn. Uh, I, I can speak from experience because of my professional level uh, athleticism that I did and yes there there is a biological difference when it comes to you know men have uh, there's like this it factor that guys have that and I hate saying this because I sound misogynistic in my head anyway but you know like guys just will do shit that girls won't you know and and that's changing like girls are getting more and more they're pushing the envelope in extreme yeah. sports they are i I'm, I'm watching it progress and you know a big argument that i always used to use was if you don't think that you know males have the advantage watch and and watch the the x games bmx women's final and then watch the men's final it's it's, it's two different levels it's not even close what guys will do versus you know physical harm and risk what guys can pull off on a bike or a skateboard is unbelievable to what the women are doing but that they're closing the gap women well, are closing it's a closing lot to do with like socialization around these sports you know um like i just and this is just an example like i i roller skate uh -huh. um like in the skate park you know like doing like like that those same sort of like tricks and yeah and you're right you know it's like if you go to the skate park, maybe like all of the guys are doing like these like kind of like risky or like they're doing like grinds and like they're like they're doing like riskier level tricks. And then like the girls are like they're participating, but maybe like one or two out of them are like doing it like the guys and everyone's like, oh, man, she's super rad, you know, um, it is. And a lot of it is like socialization. Right. Because like those two girls are maybe the ones that like were socialized earlier. You know, they had brothers that skated with them or something like that. Um, totally. But yeah, but yeah, you know, like that, the socialization also like has something to do with gender too. You know, like a lot of those girls aren't prioritizing skating like the the, the men are because they just like skate skateboarding more. Exactly. So um, so back to the original point. Sorry, I got off on this on this thing there. But yeah, I I am I agree with you. I'm with you. If we can find the children who are dysphoric 
and get them started on cross-sex hormones prior to puberty, if they choose the life of sports, there is, um, I say, and I, I hate saying it too loud because I have a lot of feminist supporters that uh, think that it's a total, it should be a total ban, 100%, regardless of when they started their, their cross-sex hormones. So, but if it's prior to puberty, I've always said this, that a, a, a boy will, if a boy starts, you know, HRT prior to puberty, that, that boy will be almost 100% equal to a woman as far as his, their strengths and physical abilities, it's diminished. Like, it, it almost levels the playing field. Um, there are some arguments that say that boys have a physical advantage even before puberty. And it's, it's kind of true. I always use uh, Little League soccer. Like, you can watch the little boys play soccer. Yeah. Also, you know, like it's like wrestling, for instance, mm -hmm. um, they don't even um, segregate the, the the men and women until they don't, age, right? Um, yeah, I'm getting a pretty physical sport. So it is, and I'm getting a lot of shit for that one too because they're seeing um, biological women are are having to compete against uh, biological men in wrestling just because there is no women's division, and and these girls are not afraid; they're not backing down. No, and um, and and that's great. I I love to see that you know, women empowerment, stuff like that. And um, which kind of brings me to uh, one of my questions that I had for you. And um, I, um, can I, um, like, yeah. can I like tell you kind of my, I don't know, like kind of where I stand on this issue. Yeah, that would um, be great. Because um, the thing is like, I'm when it comes to trans sexuality and like this whole like kind of trans, a lot of these like kind of trans debates and things like this, like, being trans right now in general is just kind of like a, like a topic of conversation and like there's people who are just like kind of like super on the left and they're like you know like i don't know i don't i don't want to <laughs> i don't say anything <laughs> just say it, girl. it's totally fine and, you know there's like people who are like super on the right who are like you know like the super right side of the spectrum is just like trans people shouldn't exist right yeah they're like oh yeah the super left sides maybe like the extreme opposite of that is like trans people are like you know, like they, they're like, they need like all of this, like, um, sort of like assistance, you know, um, um, I, I'm kind of like in the middle. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like a moderate. Right. And I draw my line really at just like, like actually, um, you know, like transition is a verb. It's something that you do. Right. And so, um, like I've had gender affirming surgeries. I've been on hormones for years. Um, a lot of my like my girls, my, my friends have, right? And I feel like that's kind of like your baseline of being like a transsexual like woman, right? Um, I think that if you're like in transition, then, you know, maybe um, you're more on like a transgender, non-binary sort of realm, um, especially if you have no um, interest, right? In, um, Say if you're if you're if you're born a boy and you want to transition to a woman, and you have no interest in any sort of like hormones or surgery, and you just dress very femininely and wear makeup and things like that, then I don't think that you like fall into the same basket, right? Um, and so, like that that's someone that I think is like like should probably never fight women, right? In like a boxing scenario, um, but then someone who's like actually transitioned, has had surgeries, has had hormones for years, um, maybe was never an athlete, you know, got into boxing. I got into boxing for self-defense, you know. I was a wimp. Um, I, I was getting beat up a lot, you know, I was getting bullied. <laughs> uh, I was a boxing for self-defense. And I'm just kind of like a tall, like kind of langley girl. And so I fit into like my weight class kind of in like a weight bully kind of way. And that's mm -hmm. like the secret to my success. Like a lot of the times when I like I post me beating up on those boys and they look like a lot smaller than me like we're the same weight you know and i'm like a foot taller than a lot of them um, yeah and so you know but outside of that i'm not like some like beast you know um and you know i i think that i think that there's bad actors that make it really hard to to make it a case-by-case -case, um like situation but i think that it should be a case-by-case -case situation and okay. i'm I tend to be team that if you have like passability to the point that like no one's like you like and I mean like serious passability. I don't mean like you just dye your hair and you're like look I, you know like no I mean like you have to like 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 have like 
like some like medical intervention, some hormonal intervention. Um, 100%, probably, yeah. Probably, you know, like you, and for like years, you know, not like, oh, you transitioned last year, right? And now you're like, you're lined up to fight. You know, we're talking about like, you've been like a, a, a woman for maybe like the last several years, right? And now this is like them coming up. Um, like if you're someone who's not, who can just like camouflage, right? With the rest of the women, not stick out, not like someone's noticing like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> like um, if you're someone who has all of their um, like identification change because you have to register, like you said, you have to get a pro card, right? So mm -hmm. like if you, you know, if you, if you, if you use a male ID and things like that, right, then, um, then just by proxy, you end up with like a male pro card and, and, you know, that so be it, right? And just by the rules, you have to kind of compete with the men. Um, yeah. And that's the thing. Like I, I, I plan to have a female pro card, but compete with the men, right? Um, that's totally honorable. That's, you know, what else could you ask for as far as, you know, for equal equality for, you know, for safety and fairness, I guess. For safety and, and fairness, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm still kind of in the, in the, um, I'm still kind of like um, in the middle when it comes to this thing, you know, because and it's mainly just because there's so many bad actors that just like make one side look really, really horrible. But I know like personally in my life, like, like I, I will fight guys, but I know like one or two like trans women who are like very frail, <laughs> like very like, like these girls yeah. have been women like, like Ari, for instance, right? Like, um, not to like, like slight Ari, but I couldn't picture her like, like punching these giant dudes and like getting down with them, you know, like, like Ari is yeah. very, so like a woman, you know? Um, oh, 100%. And, and, and that's, you're right. And I, I'm happy to talk with you because you're in the middle more than I am. I'm more extreme to the right where it's exclusion unless, you know, it's, it's, I got to see transition from prior to puberty, which a lot of the pro organizations like um, World Aquatics, the swimming, mm -hmm. um, track, not track, but cycling, uh, one of the cycling, not UCI, but uh, USA Cycling still hasn't got it. But UCI Cycling said, if you didn't transition prior to puberty, you have to compete in the men's division. And I, I think that's that's valid. Like, you know, it's a little more extreme than say yours, but for me, that's 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 the marker. That's I the think gold that's standard. marker for USA boxing too. For like yeah, trans boxer. hormones prior to puberty. And and like you said, like I do know trans women that would get knocked out by some of the girls that I've sparred with, some <laughs> of the actual women. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like um I don't want to use uh, my friend Blair White, like she's tough, like uh, she could hold her own and she's been on hormones almost all of her life since I think 19. But like Brianna Ivy, I don't know if you know who that is, like she is super frail, like she started her transition, full surgeries, everything before she was even 16 or 18 years old. So she is as close to a woman as you could get. If you were, if you were born a man, Brianna Ivy is 100% as close to a woman as any man could ever be, you know full surgery everything and yeah she, i couldn't see her punching she's a music you know she does music you know so she's not a combat person and it takes a certain mentality to do what you do it takes um, a mentality. you have to like uh get hit and i i don't um i i was never a great boxer i was a really good kickboxer because i have really strong legs and um, um i wanted to ask you have you ever so in my social media debates with i've gotten to some with women biological women who are MMA fighters, mostly because that's the circles I run in, kickboxing and MMA. Now, uh, we all know about Fallon Fox and Alana McLaughlin were two that straight up mauled their opponents. Um, actually, Fallon finally got beat before she retired, but... Well, I don't know which one, if, or if it was both of them, but my there was one that was like, that just didn't tell her opponents that she was... That was Fallon Fox. Yeah. Okay, that's... That's the one. I think the other gal um, in that situation, I think that was more of like a sanctioned match sort of situation. And so it was just kind of like, it is what it is. Um, yeah, the, the, the Atlanta one, McLaughlin. Like, yeah. the, the, kind of undercover, that sort of situation. I was like, oh my God, you know, like. Yeah, Fallon really upset me with that one. Um, I'm glad she retired and uh, it wasn't fair. But um, going back to, I wanted to ask you this. So I've gotten into debate with a few female fighters, uh, women that swear up and down they could hold their own against a man and i wanted to get your take on this so when i was kickboxing uh i had a few uh below amateur level fights that were you know refereed and stuff like that but never an amateur fight and never a pro fight but so i would help we had some female pro fighters in my gym 
It was called the 303 Training Center in Colorado um, with Dwayne Bain Ludwig <laughs> was the owner. And he um, he would let us spar against the women because that makes the women better, you know. And I was still a, a boy on testosterone, you know, natural natal male. And I noticed that, like, I could never, and, and maybe this is the empath in me, but I could never hit a girl, even with full headgear. And I'm wearing full headgear, big 18-ounce gloves, 16-ounce, whatever. I could never hit her full 100%. Like, in sparring, you never do anyway. But I was trying to convince this or just or debate with this woman that, like, men don't go 100% against women in the gym. Like, and this this girl was so adamant. She's like, I could be any guy, my weight, whatever. Like, I hold my own. No, no guys can touch me. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, when I would spar with women, even though I would tell them, yeah, I'm going to go about 80% on you, I was probably only going about 50% because it's just <laughs> – they're a little more frail and I just, I could never pull the trigger and really, really lay into a girl like that. Even if I'm trying to get her ready. One of the girls I used to train uh, made it on the ultimate fighter, the UFC show. Um, she got eliminated the first show. <laughs> she, she didn't win her first fight to stay on the show, but she made That's it. Like, like she, only like the top 1%, you know, top 5% make it onto a show like that. So yeah, she was on the very first women's UFC one with, um, I think, uh, it wasn't the Ronda Rousey coaching one, but it was the one before that. So we were super proud. We were pulling for her. And, um, but yeah, just, so what do you think that, do you think that men like kind of hold back a little more in the gym when it's just sparring? Um, I guess it depends, right? And yes and no. It really, um, mm -hmm. Yes and no. And I'll just speak from my own experience. Sure. Uh, when it's my like, like teammates, you know, like people who, and that's like, I mean, I don't mean to do air quotes. There's literal teammates, you know, because I'm going to be like on like an amateur team, but then yeah, just exactly. like inmates, you know, people I'm familiar with, my sparring partners I'm familiar with, um, those sorts of people, um, once they get to know me and they realize that I can handle that level of intensity, uh, they actually like it. it. It's kind of funny if like men, it goes quickly from being something that they're kind of like, um, kind of like insecure about right like power and then it turns into something that's like it's like almost like a fetish size sort of thing like they like a girl that can like handle like a pop you know <laughs> and like sometimes they like to like pop off and then see if like then like if I, if I just eat that they're like oh my god you know and they're like what is you, you're, like, you're still standing they're like yes <laughs> yeah it's, sure. it, it, it goes from like kind of like like okay I don't really know how hard to hit her to like oh damn she can take a hit to like oh shit let me see how much she can handle oh my gosh she can handle as much as the guys you know like this is awesome you know and they actually kind of like it but those are the, the guys that i'm familiar with um when i'm sparring new people like sometimes it's comical the just natural kind of male reaction to like to not hit a woman um even in boxing you know even if i'm hitting them there was one guy this was pretty recent just a couple weeks ago it was so bad. I put my hands down and I like told him to hit me like two, like I he told him to hit me once. And I was like, one more time. And he hit me. And I was like, okay, you see, it's okay. <laughs> you know, like hit me. Oh, okay. So like, yeah, he wasn't going a hundred percent and you wanted him to go, you know, at least 80, 90. Not only I, but our coach was standing there literally telling him, like coaching him, like telling him like hit her harder, you know? Uh, yeah. Go, go, go. Yeah. Because you're not going to get any better if you're not pushed. And that's, that's no. really what her explanation was, you know? And that's, mm. you know, th this whole, like, I started boxing for self-defense and I train and I fight and spar men for that same sort of reason, right? I don't, I'm, I'm 33 years old. Um, I started boxing just a couple years ago. I'm not going to be the WBC world, <laughs> world champion. <laughs> what is? You never know. <laughs> don't think that way. Think more positively. Okay. No, okay. I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, no. <laughs> You're, you're grounded, you're, you're based, I love you, and it's but awesome. there's a pathway for it, you know? There's a pathway for it. <clears throat> and, you know, God provides. So uh, you're right, I will not, you know, I won't speak down on that. There is a pathway for it. But it won't happen soon, you know? Um, it will still be in a few years, you know, or in years. Um, but my immediate use for boxing and learning how to fight is to defend myself. And out in the real world, my threats are men. You know, my threats are guys who are like over 160 pounds you know that are actual like threats to me i don't have to like train to fight um women because that's not that's not like a reality that i face out outside of the ring sure 100 percent. and i i would like to add too to that like if there's any parents watching and you have kids that 
you're debating getting them into martial arts for self-defense, stuff like that. Like, I can tell you the seven years that I was in kickboxing, I never walked around with so much confidence in my life. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I started fighting, not professionally, but, you know, in a gym and, and training with professionals that after that, I stopped getting in street fights. I was, I never had a problem with anybody at the mall at school. Like nothing bothered me. And I can tell you from my experiences, when you train in a gym with elite level athletes, the world outside of that gym becomes what way more easy. Yeah. And what I mean by that is you walk around with so much confidence and, and it's a good confidence that you don't need to start crap with anybody. Even if somebody started shit with me, I was more than happy to just be like, okay, no problem. I'm, I'm not going to deal with this. I'll walk away. Like you can call me on it. You know, I would take the loss verbally before I would ever get into an altercation with them because I knew I had the training and whether it's jujitsu, MMA, kickboxing, boxing, I could handle myself and it gives you another level of confidence in the public eye that you can't, you, you can't replicate that. Like there's no amount of mental without actually physically doing it. And you, you learn that like we had some killers in my gym that were kickboxers. They look like straight up nerds playing keyboards <laughs> in a school band, right? And, and they would walk in all nerdy, shoulders hunched over, you know, backpack and school books. And you'd be like, look at this geek. He's got glasses on. He's all scrawny. And, and his shirt off and he's ripped. You know? He's shredded. Yeah. And he's a killer. I'm, I'm watching him hit the bags and he's like, boom, boom, you know, and, and the bag's like moving. And, you know, you spar that guy. And I got dropped a lot with like kidney shots, uh, liver shots, like just straight up knees to the ground. I'm like, oh, I collapsed you know, with these nerds. And I, I, if I saw that guy in the mall, I wouldn't hesitate dump a soda on his head, you know, and be like, what are you going to do with, you know, like a bully would do that. And you wouldn't even think twice about these kids, but they are straight up killers walking around the streets and you don't know who you're messing with yeah. on the street. So my yeah. message, I guess I went off on that one, but this to parents, get your, get your kids in jujitsu. Yeah. Get your kids in boxing, jujitsu, whatever, get that confidence level up here. And I guarantee you would see less street fights. You would see less problems with social, um, what's it, bullying, um, not just bullying, but um, peer pressure. That's the word. You learn when you're in a gym, in a training environment, you learn you can walk away and still be proud of yourself because you know what you do inside those four walls far exceeds anything you can, you can ever be tested on out in the public, you know. So I just, that's big to me. If, if you have kids, get them in sports. And um, mostly I... I I support the, the mixed martial arts, you know, um, or any combat sport. That's the word I was trying to say. Yeah. So it's just a big confidence booster. And I'm sure you would agree with that part of it. Go back what to were you going to say? About huh? women fighting men and like that being realistic. It's it's not in most scenarios. Like it's just, there's a, there's some women that are exceptional, um, mainly in just outliers that can, yeah, outliers um, that can. And I have seen that in my gym, you know, like I've seen women like stop men and things like that, but I would say, like, in general, this idea that, like, a woman's going to, like, one hand punch, you know, like, knock out a guy is, is very unrealistic. I, I agree. I agree 100%. Okay, so, Justice, I want to get your opinion. I'm going to show you a video of a uh, trans boxer who is up in Canada, and she, her name is Mia Wompley. I did a video calling her out because I've been on the couch for 30 years or whatever. I'm 49 years old. Like, I haven't been in a boxing gym. You great for 49. Oh, thanks. Well, there's some surgery going on here <laughs> and hormones for nine years. So, you know, that keeps your skin soft, you know, the hair growth goes away. You know, I've done all like trialysis, everything I could do. Um, but thank you so much. Um, so Mia was scheduled to fight uh, Katia Bassinet and that's in the Canadian um, Boxing uh, Federation. Okay. And at the very last minute, within one hour, um, Katia's uh, coach found out that Maya was a trans woman, was a, a biological man who'd only transitioned like less than a year ago. Less than a year ago, she was fighting in the men's division. And then, uh -oh. so yeah, Katiana Bassanet was told this one hour before and she said, I'm not fighting this. This is a man. No way. And um, Maya's pissed about it. And I want you to hear the response to that. My opponent made the decision to withdraw from the tournament based solely on a text message received from another coach. Uh, and rather than asking me or my coach or even Boxing Quebec, for any further information, uh, she went directly to the media and out of me publicly. Best way to ensure fair competition is not going to be to tighten regulation or require arbitrary and invasive testing, but to trust coaches and athletes to select the most gender 
uh, appropriate category for their gender. Actions like these put athletes of all kinds of risk of exclusion and personal attack based on PSA. And this weaponizes accusations of being transgender as a means to delegitimize athletes in the female category who may be perceived as being too strong or gender non-conforming in some way. My opponent... Okay, so I'm going to replay it, but I'm going to stop just to address each little point that, that this person has to say. First of all, obviously, biological man um, doesn't look bad for a trans woman. I'll give him that. And um, But just the sheer audacity of this person to think that a biological female who is standing up for her own protection is somehow harming other female athletes. That's what really drives me nuts about this. And I know you guys, everybody, I really appreciate you guys all think, you know, and you guys know I'm a sweetheart. I'm really nice, but this drives me crazy. So I do apologize right now in advance if I do get a little bit heated about this because y'all know this topic drives me up the wall. So here they say, let's then made the decision to withdraw from the tournament based solely on a text message received from another coach. Uh, and rather than asking me or my coach or even Boxing Quebec for any further information, uh, she went directly to the media and out of me publicly. Okay, so that's um, Katia. I, I actually was nice enough to stop it just in the right time. Um, so Katia is supposed to reach out to Maya directly and say, hey, I heard you're a boy. And then what? And then Maya's going to explain to Katia how it's somehow okay that they fight because I don't even know. And did Maya want, want to provide Katya with the actual test results of Maya's testosterone level and estrogen levels? Like, even if those levels were at a match of a biological female, it's still not fair. We all know the the way this goes. We, we all know it. Only on a text message received from another coach. Uh, and rather than asking me or my coach or even Boxing Quebec for any further information, uh, she went directly to the media and outed me publicly. Best way to ensure fair competition. Okay, outed me publicly. What does that even mean? I, I said this on Twitter. Coming out as trans to the world, you're out. Like what? That tells me you're even more disingenuous because you're trying to hide the fact that you're trans from all the other boxers, letting no one know that you're a transgender person. Outing you? Are you kidding me? Why is that okay that you stay in the shadows? Why is it okay that nobody knows you're an actual man? You were born, you went through male puberty as a boy and you're trying to hide that. Clearly, you're trying to hide that. This is not fair. And it's not going to be to type regulation or require arbitrary and invasive testing, but to trust coaches and athletes to select the most gender appropriate. Okay, watch and invasive testing, but to try and is not going to be to tighten regulation or require arbitrary and invasive testing, but to trust coaches and athletes to select the most gender appropriate category for them. Okay, so what I just said, there is no need, she's saying there is no need to be invasively testing me. I, I don't want to be tested for my testosterone levels. So basically that tells me she's not on hormones. So this person is not trans in my book. Like, if you're not at least making the effort, yeah, you've got the social transition down, you know, the feminine haircut is a very feminine boy. I will give him that. But to say that you're not willing to subject yourself to invasive testing, what, it's a blood test? I do one every three months for my estrogen levels. It's not that hard. This is just unbelievably narcissistic. I can't believe this person. The agenda. Actions like these put athletes of all kinds of risk of exclusion and personal attack based on PSA. And this weaponizes- Based on hearsay. So you're saying maybe you're not a biological man? Yeah, hearsay, we, we heard you might be transgender. Give me a break. First you're complaining about being outed as being transgender. And now you're saying, oh, it's hearsay that I'm transgender. What the f is wrong with these people? There's accusations of being transgender as a means to delegitimize athletes in the female category who may be perceived as being too strong or gender not- Okay, so there she's gone with that typical leftist tactic that there are outliers in the women's category. So yes, there are physical women or women. There are women who are physically stronger than some biological males right out the gate from the start. That is called an outlier. I'm not saying there's not a lot of them. There are a few of them out there. They're everywhere, all among us. But it doesn't give you the right to say that, well, if you don't let me play, you're hurting all women including the uh, outlying physically stronger than male women out there. Like, 
Oh my God, this is, this person drives me crazy and I'm going to show you. I'm performing in some way. My opponent may. Okay, so I am willing to pay for my own flight. I will travel to Canada if they will allow me to fight this person. This person thinks they are invincible or just flying under the radar. I haven't been in a kickboxing ring or a boxing ring for that matter for 20 plus years. And what we call as a professional athlete, like we come off the couch. Basically, we still train. I still train every day. I run, I ride, I watch what I eat. I'm in shape, but I'm not in boxing shape. But I will come right off the couch and challenge Maya Walmsley to a boxing match. Probably eight rounds is as much as I can handle, but I will do it. I don't need money. Uh, I will pay for my flights to Canada. If there were other organizations that wanted to raise money and have it all go to charity, I would be down for that to fight this person for charity. That would be so cool, right? Um, as long as if I win, I get to pick the charity. And if they win, they get to pick the charity. Uh, but neither of us can walk away with a purse uh, is the way I see it. So this person is unbelievable to me. How do you even begin to be this narcissistic? Like, I don't want to be outed. I don't want to be tested. I just want to be able to fight women. Make it make sense. Tell me how this is should be allowed. It shouldn't be legal. What What is your opinion on what Maya did? Um. So I guess there's like kind of two sides or two points. One to not be outed is valid. However, I don't think like like fighting the women is like like there's a higher chance of you being outed. You know. I, I have a YouTube channel. Um, in general, I'm like kind of like known for like fighting like guys, um, and I have, we have like a little a little boxing community, and not a lot of them don't know that I'm trans. You know, it's not something that I really lead any conversation with. Um, you know, I I I I feel like if she was competing with the boys, then you know this would have never happened in the in the first place, right? Um, second. Um, even if she was like a hundred percent like good to fight women, you know, in that like super, super kind of like exception kind of range, um, I, it should still be disclosed, right? Um, it's, I, why not, right? Um, it's not like disclosing that too much. It's like going to the doctor, right? When I go to the doctor, I tell the doctor that I'm trans, <laughs> you know, I don't think that the man's going to like get on a blog and out me, you know, like this, right. this is a professional environment, right? And, you know, when you get into a, a, a professional or sanct any sanctioned boxing match, there's a chance of like, of, you know, like, like taking the other person's life. Um, any punch, you know, any good place punch can kill. And so, you know, there's just, there's just like a communal kind of understanding that you're just like super open and, and things there, right? You don't like, for instance, you don't like sandbag through a tournament, right? And then like go in there with the newbies and just knock them the fuck out, you know, like that would be just as unfair um you disclose your experience level you disclose you can't say you're left-handed and you come in right-handed right um you know if we're disclosing simple things like that then why not disclose something that's like as important as your your gender right um and then especially someone who just trans this is the person who transitioned just last year like what's yeah, yeah you know? less than a year ago they were fighting in the men's division as a boy so yeah, when it's when it's that case like then come on right and like I said, like I'm on team, like kind of like if this person had transitioned for like several years um, and then wanted to join boxing, maybe like no one's no one's heard that this person's been a man for like several years. Right. And like maybe she was like, OK, I'm going to go stealth right into the, the girls category. Um, but that also comes with like you can't be just knocking these girls out. Right. Part of like kind of like, you know, not being dysphoric and um um wanting to like fight with the girls is just like fighting with the girls right you can't be like number one on the podium just like like you know killing these girls you know like part of my friend you know it's not it's not that serious sometimes oh i use bad language on <laughs> um and so like when i fight women um and not to like patronize them or at all like there's i've been stopped by women you know in like serious fights where i was trying my hardest um there's a there's a there's advantages and there's disadvantages to being a trans woman fighting another woman. Um, that question you asked before about women fighting men, right? Um, it naturally can only happen for a very few women just by like them getting the size. However, if you train for it, then it's something that can like happen successfully a lot more. 
And that's what I train for. Like, I understand my disadvantage. I'm not going to physically be stronger than a lot of these men. I train in powerlifting. Um, and, like, weightlifting is just, like, very number-based, right? So it's, like, something that's super comparable. And, like, I have very, very, like, standard, like, female numbers. I have no bench press. And I just, like, my squat is gigantic. And I have, like, a deadlift, you know? Um, but I have no, like, true upper body strength. And I don't try to beat guys like that, you know? The best way to stop a man, and it doesn't feel um, instinctually accurate, but the best way to do it is to hit him in the body and go for, like, the softer organs. Because as much, you know, you can train your face to take power. Like, they, they're trained to take power from men, you know? You're not going to match that, you know? So mm -hmm. it's better to go for accurate organ um, punches. Go for the sternum. Go for the liver. Yeah. Go for it. I just saw your recent video on Instagram where you stopped that guy with the liver shot. <laughs> it was pretty funny. He was, <laughs> he was tall, too. That guy was really tall, and he was like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, he, like, was a, he, was my, he was my weight class, you know? Yeah, he, he um, didn't take a knee, but he was like, oh, I was, you froze him, and, I, and that was awesome. And it helped him out. <laughs> yeah, he kind of leaned on you like, oh, no. <laughs> like, oh, I, I know that pain. when I've, I've been dropped with kidney shots, liver shots, and the kidney one, to me that that is like an instant body shut off like it yeah. literally shuts you down no matter like, how big I, you... yeah i've hit the floor so hard after a kidney shot where it's just like i just went just collapsed I was like oh my god <laughs> like ow so yes I, I i saw that and and yeah the the body can be trained to absorb certain things like when you, you probably maybe experience a little bit when you're kickboxing you literally spend like a half hour every day of just having people kick you in the leg because mm -hmm. it develops that muscle and then it, leg kicks don't bother you anymore, but you have to do that repetition. It has to be a trained thing that your body's used to, and, yeah. and it breaks apart the muscle fibers, and then you can take a leg kick, and that's how these professional fighters do it. That they, get, they, they have guys over in Thailand that just hit people with wooden bamboo sticks in the legs, yeah. you know, and that's it works. Those, those dudes, if you're a female, I just recommend you, like, like um, <laughs> use, your, uh, <laughs> use your firearm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly in that situation, oh i would not know true so <laughs> yeah so back to the the disadvantaged of like this is Kat, katia bissonette the one she's the female fighter who backed out okay and for for mia to say that that was and she also goes on in that interview to say that it's it's hurting women too when this happens and i'm like no you're just being disingenuous you know you can't hide the fact you know like the other day I was at the doctor's office. I had to get an, a neck CT thing and I, my, my report came back and I had to sign the waiver and it said female on my thing. And I had to correct the doctor. You know, when it comes to doctors, I have to put male down so they understand I've got different organs or <laughs> something. My, I don't, I'm not going to risk my safety for my validation of being a woman. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, why at, at the end of the day, in this situation, the Maya chick was breaking the rules. You know, yeah. Canada has a transgender inclusion policy. It's the same, I think, as as ours here in the States. And it's basically that you have to have a full transition. Um, and you have to be at that point. Like, that's where it starts. That's not, that's not where it ends. Like, you have to mm -hmm. be fully transitioned. And then you have to, like, record your hormone levels with them for at least four years before you get in there in the ring. And so yeah. like, there is a pathway for, like, like fully like transsexual like dysphoric women who are like transitioned into women to, to fight in boxing if they if they feel like it um but to kind of like sneak in right and not follow the policy as a trans person it makes us all kind of look bad right and it, then it discourages other organizations from making policies like that and i don't mean to say like oh to like you know for like the feminists out there to like include trans women in all sports but like, like the USA boxing one is like, it's super strict, it's super strict. It, it only applies to say like a girl who's, I don't know, like in her young teens or something like that, or maybe just turned 18, um, has been on hormones for like, they're, maybe they're, they've been on, they've been on hormones since like 18, right? And, and maybe they're in their young twenties now and they want to start boxing. They've had like top surgery, bottom surgery. They've had a feminization, facial feminization. They've been on hormones for several years, you know, like it, those are the only women that are going to fit into this policy. And that's a very, 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 very small percentage. And honestly, like historically, that's the women that have already existed in women's sports just 
you know, stealth, this camouflage, right? Because these are women that don't, they, they pass, you know, and I didn't realize that was a slur, but they're, you know, they're very, they're a hundred percent passable. And so yeah, I, there's no, like, I, no confusion, like, oh, the, the, the trans person just beat me or something like that. And, and these women also aren't, are super women. They're taking losses. They're just average, right? They're, mm-hmm. they're, they're losing as often as they're winning and they don't really make it to the podium as often. A lot of the times when we have these, like trans women like Maya, for example, not to just beat up on her, but like, you know, we're talking about transitioning for like eight months and then being like, oh no, like, I, like y'all need to fight for my, my, my right <laughs> to, to fight women. It's like, no, like I'm tired of like, you know, I turn on the news and I see this stuff and it's always some like, I saw like this trans basketball player who like had injured like one of the girls and they did oh the, yeah with the rebound yeah with, like the rebound and they did the picture and she was like six five <laughs> like she had like forearm hair <laughs> she was like like yeah. bulking you know like i'm yeah. tired of this it's like you know it's like i'm sorry like but those like those aren't the trans women that i'm trying to like fight for to be in, in sports you know uh, if, if it's like a, an argument right um, yeah, and and yeah, and and it, and those are what we you called it out earlier. I used the word too, the bad faith actors that yeah, they're, maybe... they're and, and and it's you know like I, I I love you and I love like Ari the the guy who connected us because I feel like more trans women need to call this out right, um and like I'm no therapist or anything like that, but I feel like I feel like there's like kind of like an autistic or like social sort of like anxiety sort of thing right like we've heard of like the trans maxers are kind of like incel kind of like people and that's often these sports people they're they're not like incredible athletes right um but then the glow up is like crazy to go from like middle of the pack to like number one um yeah. not to like have an ego but like i'm like at the top in both you know like i i, I give out equal lefts rights and uppercuts and so like i dominate the men and the women um <laughs> and so it's 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 just what it is it's not like i I do like middle of the pack with the men, right? And so I like I choose to go to, like to the women's side because it's more easy for me. Um, and so yeah, like um, it it's these these girls need to kind of get it out of their heads that uh, identifying as trans, uh, being non-binary, um, these things are just not pre-qualifiers, especially when it comes to combat sports. At least not to me, you know. Yeah. Um, but if you like, I I've had a facial feminization surgery. I don't think that it's safe for me to go in there and take punches from men. Like I've had my stuff shaved down to to match the biology of a woman's face, you know. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. And so um, the only reason why I do it is just because, like, you know, um, because I have like a, a higher skill level, right? And that applies in boxing. If it was a street fight, I'm not doing that. Like I'm sorry, <laughs> but pop pop, you know. But in boxing, yeah. there's rules and like there's technique involved, right? And there's ways for me to like mitigate the power. There's ways for me to kind of get around it and to like to 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 survive that. But I don't think that it's safe for me to be fighting men. Um, ideally, um, I would love a trans league. I would absolutely love a trans league because I've been training with the men, and a lot of the other mm-hmm. trans women have been training with the women. So I feel like I would just crush them. Um, and so that that's me. That's music to my ears when you say that because. I we've had I've had discussions with other people, but I think people would tune in, maybe pay eventually. Once there's enough trans people in the world completely to make a trans league of almost every sport you can think of, oh, yeah. boxing, soccer, football, like people would tune in to see a trans man fight a trans woman. You know, yeah. As long as as long as both parties signed on the dotted line and both parties agree, I know I'm fighting a, a biologically different person. Then I'm okay with it. Like like you're a little more. Um, centered than I am as far as the inclusion in combat sports. I don't think it should ever be a thing. But um the thing is I compete with women um mm-hmm. and I just like you said, there are women and I don't know if it's a combat sports thing, but they get to a certain level to mm-hmm. where the, the other women are very easy for them and they want to move to men. But then they if do. You like that gap and that's almost natural. Like a, it happens to a lot of women. But it's mm. like that gap between being the best woman and like the worst man is just kind of really large, right? Yeah, there's a big gap. There. Actually, kind of like trans women could be like a nice little natural bridge in between. But the issue is a lot of these trans women that are kind of like in between, they're not like, they haven't had their strength repressed by hormones. They haven't had their body modified by like surgeries and things like that. They don't, they're not actually in that in between. They're more so like, on like the male when it comes to physicality side so that giant gap is still there 
Yeah, I agree. I call them cross dressers. <laughs> place for it in sports, right? When it's done yeah. correctly. Yeah, it can be done, and like I, I appreciate that you have that that willingness to like bridge that gap and and you know see that there are and like I said, I'm okay with it as long as it's it's in the open and both people sign on the dotted line. Yeah, and both people are aware. Yeah, but yeah. you you can't you can't my my issue is you can't force women into saying okay this trans woman is going to fight in your league and there's nothing you can do about it. you have to fight this trans woman to get your title like that's not cool but if the woman the biological woman decides you know what i'll, I'll take on that guy or that trans woman because i want to test my metal and i want to see how good i am i really think i'm better yeah and i'm all for that that's that's more of a feminism thing like they want the, the women are equal we we're just a strong thing like that so i'm for it if the girl wants it like let it happen but as long as it's done correctly and like you said with the hormone levels and the testing and i do want to but then tell it everybody gets little, it gets a little testy with sports because there's rankings right and so mm -hmm. then it's like can, what is it like at a cons if it's consensual right then it's great but does yeah. it take that out of it when you're in a league where there's a ranking right and your ranking has like trans athletes in it but like i could maybe never fight say if i'm like a just a a, a woman right i could maybe never fight a trans chick but because like they're in my league i'm always going to be third or fourth or fifth right instead of number one um so like we need to work that out there's maybe needs to be two ladders or something like that it would also affect yeah. trans athletes better right because then you have a easier ranking um when the when pools are, are lower than everyone you know there's two champions instead of just one um, <laughs> yeah right um, that's one way to yeah that's one way to go about it too that's that's a very good take on that too and in, in closing what what are your plans with after boxing how long do you think you can you can stay in the ring and where do you see it you know after do you have a career lined up after that so i'm i'm 33 i'm actually like really old and for boxing yeah. um for yes for boxing, sports like competitive yeah. sports um the amateur usa boxing category is from 18 to 40. So okay. I'm effective, I'm at the kind of end of that. So for USA Boxing, I can actually only stay in it for the next like six or seven years. And um, my goal is to, I want to get a title. I want to get either like a Golden Gloves or um, a state or a Nationals. Like I want to, I want to strap, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and those are annual tournaments, right? And so the way I see it, if I start competing this fall, right, and I start this year, I want to win one of these like major tournaments and get a title in amateurs. So I'm just okay. going to keep training every year. Um, hopefully I get it this first year. And the I second hope so too. I get it, um, I'm going to try to like elevate to, to pro boxing, but then that's in a whole different league. And to be honest, like um, there's no case studies of women fighting men in these leagues. And so they might not even allow it. Um, in USA boxing, I think that it's, I think that it's the rules that they have to allow it, right? Because um, they have to allow which part? What are you saying? They like me to box in the the men's division, um, but in like pro, like professional boxing, the thing is, instead of having like a league like USA Boxing, there's just kind of like small kind of individual organizations or like promoters, and so mm -hmm. they all have their own separate rules, right? Um, so I don't really know where boxing is going to go after USA boxing, but I'm going to, I'm going to try to like, just do my best, um, in that for now. I understand. And, and I'm so happy for you. I follow you on all your social media. Um, <clears throat> just so everybody knows, I will put justice's, uh, Instagram, um, your YouTube links and, and that's okay. If I put those on there. Yeah. Um, on this video, the links, the links will be below. So yeah. go ahead. No, um, just, you know, I guess I was just going to preface that. I just use both of those as just kind of like a diary of my progress. I'm in no way like a videographer or anything like that. You know, it's like, it's kind of bad quality. <laughs> so like, That's I, okay. But, you know, yeah, I know. pretty regularly and I try to upload videos and sometimes it's pretty funny. Like I'm like bopping these like 200 pound men, you know. <laughs> It's cool. I, I've watched a lot of your videos on my Instagram feeds and um, you pop up on my YouTube shorts a lot. So um, okay. you guys check, check out Justice. I'm going to put her links in the video in the description down below. Um, please like, uh, leave me any comments. Do you have any questions for Justice? Let me know. Um, we do text. We, we are friends. So um, we can, 
I can help you guys out on that. If you guys have any questions, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And um, I really want to thank Justice for coming on today. Thank you so much. You're an angel. Thank you for having me.